Hello, my name is Rainer Gerhardt and I'm the main author of our Syslog. Uh, in this presentation I want to show you uh, simple forwarding with our Syslog. This is not for advanced use cases, just for standard cases where you have one system or many systems that should forward messages to a remote system for central gathering of messages. Uh, I assume a standard configuration uh, using a Debian system in this sample uh, and I'll show how to forward via UDP and TCP messages. I will not elaborate on advanced cases, uh, for example thinking about message loss, except uh, that UDP is much more lossy than TCP is. Uh, there are a number of subtleties uh, in regard to message loss even with TCP uh, and I won't cover these, uh, it's for simple cases. Uh, very same is true for TLS and other advanced topics. Uh, if you want to secure your traffic, there's native TLS support in our syslog, uh, but you need to dig deeper than I'll do in this demo. Uh, on the website there's an advanced TLS guide showing you a step-by-step -step, uh, approach to securing TLS. So let's go to the base system just the preliminaries. Uh, I've set up uh, GVIM over here. Uh, let's go into rsyslogconf. It's the pretty standard rsyslogconf that comes if Debian is installed. I guess other distributions have uh, similar syslog configurations. Right at the beginning is something that's very important. Uh, this is that over here. Uh, we are loading input modules. Uh, one is IMUX SOC uh, and the other one is IMK log. Uh, these modules enable our syslog to gather syslog messages from the local system uh, and for example here's another one IMUDP uh, that enables it to accept remote messages. If you do not load these plugins our syslog will not receive any message, not even from the local system. Uh, so it is not sufficient to use an empty uh, syslog configuration file without these directives uh, because then you would not see anything. So let's go through the config. There's a lot of standard stuff. Uh, timestamp format is changed. Directory creation mode are set. Uh, then you have the usual logging targets, logging for the mail system, etc, etc. What I do is I go right to the end of this file. Now oh, there's another sample case in, I'll delete that. That's left over from my last demonstration. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll forward everything, which translates to this. Uh, and let's say I forward this to a system named uh, server.example.net. So that's it basically what you need for UDP. UDP forwarding. Of course you can use an IP address instead of uh, a system name 172 let's say 1601 uh, and you can also use port, non-standard ports. Standard is 514 if you want to go for uh, 1, 5, 14. Uh, you just add a colon and the port number. And that will forward messages via UDP. Of course, if you are just interested in mail messages, you can use any of the standard selectors, server.example.example.net. So that works as well. Uh, you can also use any advanced uh, selectors in our syslog and any advanced filters. Uh, if you now want to go via TCP, it's just as easy as adding an additional add sign because this is no longer UDP, this is TCP forwarding. And same goes over here in all of these samples. And of course that's no longer UDP, that's TCP. And of course if you like you can, let's clean up a little bit, you can log to multiple machines, let's say, and you can use multiple protocols, let's say that's the UDP server.example.net, then you can use UDP forwarding. So there's no limit in uh, how many servers 
to, to you can forward to. Well, that actually concludes my quick sample. Uh, just let me remind you that TCP is much more reliable than UDP is. Uh, in essence, with UDP you don't even notice if uh, messages are dropped, ju uh, just uh, by not seeing them at the remote end. Uh, with TCP we are able to notice it and there are some advanced flow control and advanced uh, reliability, reliability settings that enable you to prevent message loss. There are a bunch of other protocols like RELP uh, which enable you to transfer messages m even more reliably uh, but I won't cover this in this tutorial. Hope that was useful for you and uh, happy syslogging.